Hi, this is Rafiq Suleiman, and you are watching Cloud Simplified. Hi everyone and welcome to another lesson from the Cloud Practitioner Express and in this lesson we're going to talk about something very interesting which is a big topic containers on AWS and in this one this is where we're going to explain what's an ECS, what's EKS, Fargate and ECR. With this let's start and in order for us to start we need to understand first of all why containers, why did we need the concept of containers? And to give you a very simple example, let's imagine if we have someone acting as a developer, developing a certain code on their machine, developing the code, testing the code, the code is working fine. Now, since the code is working fine, the developer took the code and is deploying the code right now in production, but guess what? The code is not working. So why the same application lines of code? They were working in my testing environment and they were not working in production and here the answer very simply because in order for my lines of code to work I import the libraries and then I use the functions inside these libraries. So in a case where I didn't import the same libraries like here in the production that's why my application was not working. So the solution is I need to import the same libraries inside the production environment so my code will be working and that's exactly the problem that containers have solved. So with containers what do I do? With containers I do what we call I package. So I package my application code along with any library or any dependency that this code needs and I package them together. So now, if I know that my container is working fine inside my testing environment, I know very well it will be working fine inside my production environment because it has all the dependencies that it might need to run. This is very, very good. And something to understand also the terminology and the software names we are going to, to, uh, to use here. And for container images, we have something called Docker containers. So here we use Docker containers. Now, the next challenge will be, how do I manage and how do I orchestrate my containers? If I'm using this for a testing environment, I'm using my own machine, for example, I am running multiple containers. I am manually launching and terminating containers. That is perfectly fine if I just have a testing environment just one machine. But if I have this in production, and this is where I have tens of servers, and also this is where I have hundreds of containers. Now, managing these containers is going to be very challenging if I'm doing this manually. And that's why I need a higher layer. I need an orchestration layer to manage for me my containers. And here comes this, or what we call Kubernetes. So Kubernetes, this is the name of the software platform that I can use to orchestrate and manage my containers. So let's understand in a bit of details what do I do with management or, and orchestration. First of all, my management software is detecting if I already have available resources on these servers to deploy new containers. And then this maintains the containers life cycle, which means launching new containers or terminating containers that, for example, I no longer need. And finally, the management or orchestration software, this is detecting my container's health. <clears throat> In case I have one container which is not healthy, it terminates the container and maybe launch a complete new container. This is the concept now. Now, let's see how do I deploy containers on AWS. And let's start with this scenario. If I already have on-premise and I was running on-premise Kubernetes containers and now I want to migrate over the cloud, then I can start with the first service called EKS. And EKS stands for Elastic Kubernetes Service. And this one, this is a fully managed Kubernetes service. 
in order to make it very easy for you to create a Kubernetes cluster. So again, this is for management and for orchestration. The next question, where do I run my container? I have two options. The first option, I can run my containers on EC2 instances. So for example, I need to provision the EC2 instances and then I need to launch my containers which will take from the resources of this EC2 instance. That's the first type. Then the second type is what we call Fargate. And this is now very, very important because Fargate, this is a serverless offering from our containers. Serverless means what? If you remember Lambda function, it was serverless compute, which means I don't need to provision servers. And that's exactly the case here. In Fargate, I just point to what are my container images and to power on and launch these container images, AWS will be responsible to assign the resources that these containers need. So that's the first part or that's the first option of deployment using EKS. And this makes sense if I have already uh, Kubernetes on premise and I am migrating to the cloud. The next option is what if I'm starting from scratch on the cloud to run containers and here comes the second one here called ECS Elastic Container Services. So ECS or Elastic Container Service, that's the native AWS management software in order to manage and orchestrate Kubernetes. And it makes sense to use ECS. If you're starting from scratch, ECS is much more simpler. And by the way, ECS is more cost effective than the EKS, yeah? And again, the question, ECS is to manage and orchestrate. Where can I run my containers exactly the same case? I can run my containers on EC2, where I have my containers sharing from the resources of the EC2 instance. And here I need to be paying attention to my EC2 and also to my containers. And the other option, which is again, much, much more simpler is to run your containers as Fargate, which means I point to the container images and ECS will launch my container. But guess what? I don't need to worry about my resources. This will be the responsibility of AWS. So this is running containers on AWS. So Docker containers managed by Kubernetes on premise and on the cloud on AWS, I can do it through EKS or I can do it through ECS. And then finally, I need to have a place where I can store my containers. So where do I store my containers? I store my containers into something called my registry. And on AWS, we have this service called ECR and ECR stands for Elastic Container Registry. Very simply, this is where I store my container images. So ECR will store, will manage to deploy your Docker containers. So this is alternative. So if I want to store my containers publicly, I can have the most famous one is Docker Hub. But the big difference between Docker Hub and ECR, Docker Hub is a public registry. Anyone can use Docker Hub, but ECR, as an advantage, ECR can be a private registry. So only the container images I put on ECR is only available to me. And that's an extra benefit on ECR. It could be a private registry only available to my account. And finally, ECR integrates very well with the other AWS services. It's a native AWS service, which is ECR. So with this, we completed this lesson where we explained the multiple options of containers that I can do on AWS. So at the beginning, we spoke about Docker containers. How do I manage them through Kubernetes? How do I have management on AWS cloud? It's through EKS or through ECS. And then where do I save my container images? I save them on ECR. So I hope this lesson was simplified enough even if you don't have a containers background, I hope that this lesson makes sense to you right now and you will be able to differentiate when is the use case to use any 
of the services here. With this, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next lessons.